welcome viewers to another edition of the Sanctuary, the Gospel in Symbols. We are glad you can join us today for yet another exciting episode where with the Spirit of God guiding us, we're able to delve into Scripture and understand God's plan for the salvation of mankind. The last time you joined us, we tried to understand how this whole sanctuary came about. Why did God give this to his people? And what at all was God communicating to mankind with all of the specifics he gave as to the design and symbols and items to be used in this sanctuary? Thank you for always staying in touch with us via our WhatsApp numbers and email. Like you already know, the telephone number you can reach us on to get interactive is 055-968-0066 or by email hopetvghana at gmail.com. The Hope TV Ghana are all in small caps. Today, we have another exciting topic we'll be reviewing. We want to understand how God through the ages gave light on the sanctuary. Was it just for Moses and the Israelites? Is it just an Old Testament thing? Primarily because its roots are found in the Old Testament? What evidence do we have in the New Testament about God speaking to his children about the sanctuary? Stay with me. As I come back, I will introduce to you the wonderful resource persons who will join us today for a discussion on the sanctuary, the gospel in symbols. We'll be right back. Welcome viewers from the short commercial break. I will introduce to you the guest who will be with me today. But just before I do that, in our last episode, I mentioned to you that the team for the sanctuary will be more than glad and excited to come to wherever you are to share with you this wonderful news, the gospel of our salvation. The team will be willing to come with the miniature of the sanctuary so you're able to walk through with them and the resource persons whatever questions you have. There are some numbers you can reach us on to be able to get this assignment done. Please write down this number, 020-2018811. 020-2018811. And you are going to speak right to the elder I'm introducing. Elder Ernest Kusiabebi. Elder, welcome. Thank you. So this is the man to call to be able to bring the sanctuary to your church, your community, your village, wherever you are. It's good to have you today, too. Thank you very much, sir. And we thank God for your life for, to want to join us for today. Amen. Pastor, <coughs> Pastor, you already know him as the Director for Health Ministries of the Accra City Conference of the Seventh day Adventist Church and also the Church Pastor for Blessed Assurance Seventh day Adventist Church, located right in the heart of the Accra City Conference building. Pastor Emmanuel Champon, good to see you. Nice to be with you, too. Okay, so um, we believe that viewers would already be sending their questions, and so at the right time, uh, when it's given to me, I'll share with all of you so that you can help our viewers out there to understand this message. As we begin the conversation, we invite you to offer a prayer in your head, in your hearts, as we delve into the Holy Scriptures. So, Elder, let me begin with you. In our previous episode, you told us that the sanctuary is the GPS of God. Yes. He is bringing us right to where we can find him. And then you also reminded us of what David said in Psalm 77, verse 13. Right. So, if this is the GPS of God, we know from Scripture that in Exodus 25, God called Moses to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And he showed him the whole business of the sanctuary. Yes. Is it okay for me to say that it was meant for Moses and the Israelites, this whole business of the sanctuary? Okay, thank you very much for the question. As we, we began, 
The sanctuary story is about God's restoration plan for mankind. It is not about Israel. It is about mankind. Israel, I would say, is only a conduit through which God is unveiling this great plan of salvation of humanity. Israel is only a type, but the bigger picture is the anti-type. In the sense that in Genesis 3.15, God gave the first promise of the seed of the woman who will bruise the head of the serpent. And this we know is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So before Jesus would come, we know he came, you know, many years after. That's but before he would come, God had laid down a certain system that was leading to the coming of Christ himself. Mm. And this is, is about the sanctuary. What he had actually laid down is a sanctuary. It began with the altar. So we had Adam making an altar, Abraham and Noah and all these people were making altars where they were worshiping God. But then in, 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 Gen in Exodus, God is saying, I want to come and dwell to tabernacle with you. Mm. To tabernacle with you, I need a place to stay. Mm. So make me a dwelling place where I can stay with you. Now, everything that we have in the sanctuary is a reality. Mm. It is not in the actuality itself that we are talking about today, okay. but the essence of it. The essence of it. Exactly. The essence of it is what we want to understand now. Okay, so just before we would delve deep into the essence of it, I want to bring Pastor into the conversation. Elder mentioned the type and the anti-type. What are these two terms? What does it exactly mean when we say the type? and the anti-type. Can you please shed some light on it? Okay, uh, the type and anti-type is um, what is go what God told us to do, told Moses to do, mm -hmm. he built, okay. becomes the anti-type. Okay. Because the type is already what God has in there. That was what he told Moses, that you have to do according to this pattern. So if I understand you correctly, together with my viewers, the type is the original. Yes. In heaven. In heaven. The dwelling place of God. Yes. And that is what he showed to Moses. Moses. So then what Moses constructs together with the Israelites becomes the anti-type. Anti yes. So it is a, a, a pattern after. Yes. So like viewers who are students, you have the textbook, and you go to the photocopier machine, uh -huh. and then you make a photocopy. Yes. But then the photocopy will have a resemblance Mas. exactly like the original. Like the original. If oh, I want to say something. Yes. Um, <coughs> you know, we're talking about the plan of salvation. Okay. And the typical form that God gave us in the book of the Hebrews. beginnings mm -hmm. of the Bible in Genesis, Exodus, in the, in the, in the Torah mm -hmm. that he gave to Israel mm -hmm. is the type. Mm -hmm. That is the shadow mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is Christ. Okay. So whatever is in the, in the, in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. in, the, in the old sanctuary, mm -hmm. is a type of things, okay. a shadow, okay. but the reality mm -hmm. is Christ, and okay. he is the anti-type. Mm -hmm. okay. So always, the anti-type is bigger and larger and more glorious than the type. Than the type. Okay. okay, so to to set the perspectives right, the Israelites have been shown a pattern, exactly. Moses, to build. Right. And that is to point to the bigger picture. The bigger picture. So in order not to be confused, the anti-type is the reality, the bigger picture. Exactly. And then the type is what they could visibly see. Exactly. That they were made the symbols. The symbols. Yeah. Okay. So with this understanding, um, just to delve a bit into it, uh, some Bible researchers okay. tell us that all through scripture, the sanctuary, is mentioned over 130 times. Uh, 
from Exodus all the way to Revelation. So all through the ages, it means that the message was not just given to the Israelites. No. Who else amongst God's children was given an understanding of the sanctuary? You want to share with the viewers? Yes. Like I said, the, the sanctuary is uh, originating from the type. Okay. So if you, if you, if you look at the, the, the setting of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. the whole system mm -hmm. is about Christ. Okay. Okay, it's about Christ. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, mm -hmm. we learn, let's, let's go back a little bit. In, okay. in the book of Daniel, okay. we study about the cleansing of the sanctuary in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Okay. Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, but the cleansing of the sanctuary actually is, is a judgment, is a day of judgment. Okay. And Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. we learn he is in the sanctuary. He mm -hmm. is in the most holy place, okay. the holies of holies, okay. where he, he dwells now with the Father. Okay. And his business there is also to judge. Okay. Yet he is also a mediator. Okay. So it's a beautiful setting that God, so what they were doing in the Old Testament time, Christ is also doing in the New Testament time. Let me bring in Pastor. Okay. So Elder has told us about the Old Testament. I'm yes. sure we heard about Daniel. Mm -hmm. And also last episode, he spoke about David telling us, Thy way, O God, is the sanctuary. Yes. Now, in the New Testament, what examples and evidence do we have about Jesus telling us about the essence of the sanctuary? Well, when we go into the, uh, the book of Hebrews, okay. we read a whole lot about the sanctuary. And that is where you would first encounter the sanctuary in heaven. Okay. Now, let us read, uh, let us go forward to okay. uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Okay, Hebrews chapter 8. 8, 1 to 5. Okay. It says, now this is the main point of the things we are saying. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Mm. And that is Jesus Christ. He says, a minister of the sanctuary okay. and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. So here, is the, what is the Apostle Paul trying to tell us? The Apostle Paul is trying to help us to understand like Way back Moses' time, mm -hmm. we have had this sanctuary. Okay. And people might think that it is all oh, only Moses' time and for the Israelites. But here is Apostle Paul mm -hmm. telling us about the sanctuary mm -hmm. in heaven where Jesus Christ. So this exactly helps us to know where Jesus is. He is the high priest. So if we have a high priest today, then we should know that the high priest is in heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's in the sanctuary. Mm. Elder, yes. the Apostle Paul says that the true tabernacle, yes. is there an essence for him to emphasize the truism of this tabernacle yes. he's talking about? Yes, it is. Because, you see, the Israelites, um, instead of looking up to the coming of Christ, mm. they now became so comfortable and rather uh, uh, became more engrossed mm -hmm. in the symbols mm -hmm. and colors instead of what it represented. Mm. Because it was not in the actual uh, uh, symbols and, and, and objects that, that God meant them to, to associate with. But they were only symbols. So in the book of... Um, Hebrews, once again, mm -hmm. yes. when we read chapter 10, okay. he says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, mm -hmm. can never 
would these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect? Mm. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified would have no had no more consciousness of sins. Mm -hmm. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Mm -hmm. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Yeah. So you see, all those sacrifices and everything that was happening in the sanctuary mm -hmm. were only symbolic. Mm -hmm. But the essence was Christ. And God had wanted Israel to look up to this Christ. Their forgiveness of their sins was not in the slaughtering of the animals. That couldn't forgive their sins. How can the blood of bull forgive you your sins? Mm. It was only a symbol mm. representing the reality and the essence that is Jesus Christ. So their belief should be in Christ and not the symbols. But unfortunately, it turned out the other way around. And um, my viewers may be thinking in their head, in turning the other way around, Today, for us as Christians, Bible-believing Christians all over the world, yes. we tend to go into a building made with the hands of man, which is the church buildings we go into. Does it not appear that in our worship with God, whenever we enter these churches, buildings, we tend to focus on the things that happen there instead of what it should help us build with the relationship with Christ, Pastor? Unfortunately, that is what is happening now. But through these studies, through the studies of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. is helping us by the quotations that we just read. Mm -hmm. Through the sanctuary, we have the high priest, who is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we should, through the sanctuary, we should understand that when we go to the sanctuary, when we read um, the book of Le Leviticus chapter 19, okay. verse uh, 30. This is what the word of God says. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths okay. and reverence my sanctuary. sanctuary. I am the Lord. Yes. Amen. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence mm. my sanctuary. If we understand this, this is what God is saying. This is where I live. And you are coming to me, but you don't come to me with that sense, with that essence, that you are coming towards a holy God. But you come to me anyhow, just as our, our elder said. So the, 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 the churches or the temples that we believe that God is there and we are going to meet him. This is what he's saying. Reverence my sanctuary. Pastor Hold, it's right there. Viewers, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we want to understand what it means to reverence God's sanctuary. Yes, we know that the sanctuary is in heaven, which is the true sanctuary. But man has made buildings, places of worship we, we go and worship. How do we reverence the sanctuary? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, viewers, from the short break. Today, we are studying together with you how God, through the ages, has given light on the sanctuary. Just before we went on break, Pastor read with us Leviticus 19, verse 30, which said, Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Lord. Elder, reverencing the sanctuary. When you sit back in church, when you visit your friends at their places of worship, and you take this text we have just read, God saying we should reverence his sanctuary. What do you see when you visit our churches and your friends' churches? Thank you very much. <coughs> there has been um, a transformation, if, I, if, if you please. Uh, I don't know whether that is the right word. But you know, in the beginning, God dwelled in tents. Mm. That was his sanctuary. Mm. Then Solomon built him a temple. Mm. He came to dwell in the temple. Mm. 
Zerubbabel also built a temple. Yes. There was a temple Ezekiel had prophesied, which never came, came, came by though. But in eschatology, dating from the past to now, if we consider that in those times, to this time to be the future, then in our present time, where God says he dwells is the body temple. Okay. 1 Corinthians 3.16 yes. says, yes. Do you not know mm -hmm. that you are the temple of God mm -hmm. and that the Spirit of God, God dwells in you? In you. It is good and it is right that we have nice buildings, mm. uh, comfortable places mm -hmm. where we can meet and assemble and fellowship together and mm. worship our God. Mm -hmm. But in truth, mm. what God, ma what matters God most is the, is body, the body. The body temple. Is the body temple. Mm. So if you are not to defile mm. the earthly sanctuary mm. as in the time of Moses, mm. and if we are talking about type and an anti-type, mm -hmm. and the anti-type is this body temple now, which is a sanctuary, mm -hmm. Why would you want to defile the temple of God? Mm. Why would you want to defile the temple of God? We know what happened in the time of Moses. That anyone who defiled the temple of God was struck. We remember a, a Nadab and Abihu mm. who took strange fire mm. into the holy place. Mm. They were struck by God. Mm. If this is the temple of God, mm -hmm. why are you defiling the temple of God? He says, in the things you eat, 1, Cor 1 Corinthians 10, 31, mm. in that which you eat and drink, do all to, to the, the glory, glory of, of the God. Lord. God. For the temple is the habitation of the Holy Spirit. Why would you want to go and fornicate on the Holy Spirit? Mm. Why would you want to drink alcohol on the Holy Spirit? Mm. Or smoke cigarettes onto the Holy Spirit? Mm. Why would you want to lie? Mm. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth authorizes so what is in you? What, what life are you leading? You believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you? If he lives in you, you could not be drinking. You could not be committing fornication because this defiles the body. Mm. And where, the, you defi where there is defilement, God will not dwell there. Will not dwell there. So, Pastor, yes. for our viewers, Elder has touched on our bodies as temples. Yes. Let's come to the physical buildings, which are also temples where we assemble and worship. What picture do we see these days with all of us as Christians going to these temples? Are there some happenings which are of concern as to whether we are reverencing the temple, the sanctuary, the physical structure we go in there? Our physical structure of temples that we have today, uh, unfortunately, has become like what, how we want to beautify the place mm. for ourselves, mm. unfortunately. Not like what God has designed for us or what God has given us to do. Therefore, it becomes difficult for us because unfortunately, like in Ghana here, mm -hmm. almost every building, if you like, if you give, the 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 the, the freedom mm -hmm. i bet you maybe every building might be turned to a temple mm. look at how where we have constructed and where we have our churches mm. when somebody tells you that this is a church if you put a building and then the top mm. is free mm. it's a, a, a it's a, a place of worship but that is what is happening but today. To narrow it down further, the people who enter, you and I, mm -hmm. who enter these temples to worship and assemble in prayer, the injunction of God in Leviticus is that we are to reverence his temple. What should we be guided by when we enter the presence of God in these temples? What should we do? God is holy. And therefore, just as we read, he said, I am God. We have to go according with humility, mm. humbleness. Going to meet a holy God, you have to first check yourself. Mm. Make sure that I am going to meet a, 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 a holy God. It's just like you are going to meet like the president. Okay. 
you are going to meet like a tomb for. Mm. You cannot just go anyhow with any kind of dressing. Okay. You have to go with appropriate dressing. Okay. And that is what God has even given us through the sanctuary. The dressing of the high priest, God actually gave distinct description of how the priests ought to dress, cover, dress themselves before they can even approach him. And since in our days, First Peter 2, 9 says, we are all priests of God now, it means we have to be mindful of what we wear even coming into the presence of God. Indeed. Elder, you want to also touch on what we do when we are in the presence of God. Yes. In uh, worship. In, in, in the typical form, in the sanctuary, in the mosaic time, how, how did they treat the sanctuary? Hmm. There were special people who were cleaning the place. Hmm. There were different apartments. You couldn't just enter it anyhow. Mm. And when somebody was coming, he came with a contrite heart mm. because you were a sinner. What in the world is happening to our churches? A sinner who is coming before God to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And you are dancing and jumping. In the name of in the name of praising God, him. Praising him. Falling on the ground. Rolling over. People just exposing themselves Self. before the presence of God. That we don't believe that God is there. Mm. Because when you are coming into the, into, into the church, into the temple, the belief is that you are coming to meet God. Mm. So the fact that you don't see him physically does not make it absent. He mm. is present. Mm. So if God is present, what manner of person should you be mm. in the presence of the Almighty God? When angels are prostrating, mm. Abraham prostrate before God and, mm. and, and David and mm. Samuel and all these old patriarchs whom we look up to, mm. how they worship God. How are we worshiping God today? We think that God is our equal. Mm. So we can even stand there and command him. Mm. God should be merciful unto us. Amen. But I believe that as Christians, we should look at how the patriarchs worship God and found favor in his sight. Many of us, as the Bible says, we only worship God with our mouth. But not with our heart. But our heart is far away far from away. Him. In vain do we worship him. Teaching after the commandments of men. Yeah. Not according to what he has said. You see, whatever you are doing, if you are worshiping God and you cannot align it to the Bible, you, are, you need to be very careful because yes. God does not respect man, man's own imaginations. Yeah. But that which God has said, according to his precepts. Yes. So, Pastor, this point is one that needs emphasizing. Yes. How we conduct ourselves in the presence of God. The Bible says we should revere his sanctuary. Yes. And you were the person who spoke about appearing before earthly leaders. Yes. You mentioned the Otumfo. Yes. You mentioned the president. Yes. And as citizens, viewers, we know that appearing before these people comes with certain protocols. Indeed. So what is happening to us as Christians in our day that we lose sight of the one whom we are appearing before when we come into his presence? Elder, it is so sad. It is so sad that uh, but the whole concept of God that we are going to meet is rather, I mean, we, we, we have lost it. Therefore, we have taken God to be like us. And let me bring in this idea. Because it looks like the, the, the leaders, mm. our pastors, our bishops, ministers, ministers, having all the titles. Uh, not even the titles, but mm. we, we, uh, the people have come to uh, 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 understand that they are going to meet me. Mm. They are going to meet you or the elder. Mm. If they actually have in their minds that they are going to meet a holy God who is a consuming fire, as the Bible tells us, I don't think we will go this way. So I think we need to reflect ourselves and think once again that God is there and we are going to meet him. 
And therefore, we should go with humility, just as Elder said. We know that from ancient times, anybody, everyone who goes before God, just as he's saying, in the sanctuary, when you get in there, the manna, you go with humble heart. You go with a broken heart before God because you were a sinner. The sanctuary tells us that God is particular about his laws. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you very much, Elder. All too soon, our time is up for today's discussion. And we have reflected on how God has, through the ages, given light on his sanctuary. We have learned today that coming before God in his sanctuary, the physical buildings you and I worship in, we should remember that his dwelling place is there, and we should revere his presence. We've also been reminded that our bodies are the temples of God. And if the Holy Spirit dwells in our bodies, how do we handle this body temple? Today, we want to thank the Spirit of God for this understanding. It is my hope and prayer that as you reflect on these things, you would understand that God loves man. Mm -hmm. He loves you. Yes. He loves me. Yes. And he wants to reconcile us to himself. Thank you very much for joining us. I have been your host, Charles Othnelabe. Joining me today has been Pastor Emmanuel Ichampon, the pastor for Blessed Assurance Seventh-day Adventist Church and director of the Health Ministries of Accra City Conference and Elder Enes Kusia Babiu, the man whose telephone number I gave, that if you want the miniature of the sanctuary in your church, in your community, in your locality, we'll be more than happy to come with you there. Join us next week, same time, as we bring your way with the message of the gospel in symbols, the sanctuary. Goodbye. <laughs>